Hi, I'm Don. Today, we're talking about underpainting, underpainting of miniatures. We will be painting this, like we're doing batch painting of this creature caster miniatures. And we're painting this minis with an underpainting. And I'm using Citadel washes and Citadel contrast paints for the first time for the underpainting. Of course, after the underpainting, we'll be finishing the models with cuttlefish colors. So watch the video as we turn these very beautiful models into this. Hi, I'm Don. Welcome to my studio. Other than my awesome patrons which fuel this channel, this channel is supported by all these awesome brands. So we start with contrast paint and then like create a very nice sepia underpainting of all these five miniatures. But first we talk about underpainting. What is underpainting? I've, I've seen a video like way back that even like a few painters even call priming underpainting. But for me, underpainting is the paints or the painting that will help you paint the base colors or your like your midtones. For example, the darker midtone, which is um, like dark green, you paint that as your underpainting before you paint your mid-tone color which is olive green so anything that helps with the build up to your medium tone or mid-tone color or base color is underpainting this sepia underpainting is very similar to my rust underpainting which is derived from like the painting of mecha gunpla and basically from fine scale modeling so this one looks the same it like works the same although the rust underpainting i did it with the airbrush and i also did it by uh, like people call it slop chop now but i created a rust underpainting by a dry brushing too so it doesn't really matter how you apply your, your underpainting of course the most efficient way would be to airbrush but there are times especially for me like sometimes i just want to relax i don't want to clean the airbrush i don't even want to pull it out and use it to paint my miniatures so it's it's like late night painting it's so relaxing if you just use a big brush and just dry brush the models or apply a wash like this one so that you like leisurely create or build up your underpainting and then you build up your colors on top of that since this video is edited and it's youtube it may seem like it's automatic for me to decide which color to use over the sepia underpainting but it's kind of tricky to decide which parts of the model will you paint like some parts of the model you should like leave it as sepia like for example the really tiny parts the ropes or even the boots you could leave it as your like the sepia underpainting and just paint the highlights on top of that so having a sepia underpainting is like having a colored miniature already because most of the colors especially fantasy stuff and especially if you're doing grim dark so a really dark brown underpainting could really set like the tone or like it would give you a colored look for the model already you just need to apply different tones like magenta on the cloth a bit of olive green on some areas paint highlights for the leather parts and of course paint the skulls so it's minimal painting after you've done the underpainting which makes the whole method a bit more efficient also since i'm painting with cuttlefish colors which are pre-glazed paints it's so easy for me to build up the colors on top of the underpainting because the paints are pre-glazed already 
But if you're using ordinary paints like Vallejos or Citadels, you just have to add a bit more medium so that you have a semi-transparent paint that you could glaze layer or do heavy glazing on top of the underpainting and build up the colors and create nice transition since you're painting with semi-transparent paints. The trick to painting over the sepia underpainting is your transition from the sepia-ish underpainting towards your midtones. But once you've painted your midtones or your base colors, it's just a matter of how much time do you want to spend on painting highlights and adding textures. After painting the base colors on top of the sepia underpainting or the midtones, you're practically you practically have a tabletop level painting already. So now it's just a matter of adding more textures and painting more highlights or defining like the definition, no, defining the separation in between the elements of the model like defining the separation between the skin and the clothes or the skin and the armor parts. Similar to zenithal underpainting or even slop chop, you may want to paint certain areas like for example here I'm using a purple leviathan contrast paint to darken some areas that I will paint NMM. So I'm more comfortable painting NMM over black paint but this one will do because I don't want to repaint all the details, all the metal parts into black and build up the colors from black. So I opted to just use contrast paint to darken the areas and then paint the highlights of the NMM and smoothen it out later. By painting or making the NMM parts darker, it creates separation with the wooden parts or the leather parts. So it's, it's crucial to make it darker before you build up the NMM highlights. So similar, again, it's similar to zenithal underpainting or slop chop. You have to do a lot of recess painting if you want good definition or you may want to paint other parts like black and build up the colors from black so that you have good separation in between the different elements of the model. So we are done. So it's time for our golden lemon reveal. But before I show you the finished models, it's time to thank all my awesome patrons. Super thanks to all my patrons. They helped me like raise the money for the operation of my wife. And she's doing well. She's resting. We'll have our first like checkup on Tuesday. So super thanks to all of these patrons. Especially my Palladium tier patrons. Marco, Matt, Big Kitty Paints, and Kaiju. So I rarely do batch painting because there will always be compromise. I see areas that needs a bit more glazing and it needs a bit more recess painting to create more definition and to create like a sharper and like a model with better contrast. But I'm very happy with the result since I got to finish like 5 models. Although I spent like 5 days, roughly around 5 days to finish these 5 minis, but still I'm very happy with the result. Before I had Patreon, I used to finish models in 4 to 6 hours and then edit and then release the video every other day because I'm trying to grow my YouTube channel. But these days since I have the support of my patrons, I finish a model around in a couple of days at least. So this one I painted one mini per day so I guess it was fast. But then again, it is a bit more compromised. I must admit though, that airbrushing your underpainting is a bit more efficient. Although, I kinda enjoy doing the sepia underpainting with washes and contrast paints. 
the longer tutorial version of this video is now up at Patreon. I hope you like the video guys. That's it, Pansit.